Hello, y'all, and welcome to Ethics with me, Dr. Dan Herrick. I am delighted that you're taking this class, and I'm looking forward to our term together. Uh, first of all, I have to apologize for kind of a strange camera mic setup. I'm not an accomplished YouTuber, so I'm just figuring things out as I go here. Uh, I did run the sound quality by my nine-year-old daughter. I plugged in the mic while I was FaceTiming her, and I said, uh, rate the sound quality, the clarity, from one to five, where one is the worst and five is the best. And she said that I was a five out of five for cringe. Uh, and then she sent me five or six Roblox avatar stickers. So uh, if you have concerns about the sound quality, rest assured, I've run it by the experts. So in this module, we're going to talk pretty extensively about what ethics is and why we should study it. But in this first video, I just want to talk about the course. So not the content of the course, but just the structure of the course, like how it's going to go so you know what to expect. So the first thing to know about this course, which you already do know, is that it is an asynchronous online course. Uh, and it's worth unpacking just a little bit um, what that means for this course. So first of all, I'm a Greek nerd, so I can't resist unpacking the uh, meaning of asynchronous, which is a straight up Greek word, so has three parts a, soon, chronos. Uh, chronos, as you might know, means time, like a chronometer. Uh, soon means with, and a means not. And you know this because a is everywhere in English, this, what's known as the alpha privative in Greek, right? So, little trivia here what do you call someone who doesn't believe in God? A theist, right? No theos, no God. Uh, what do you call in health professions a patient who's not exhibiting signs or symptoms? Right? Asymptomatic. Uh, in the acronym LGBTQIA, what does the A stand for? Asexual, not sexually attracted to anyone. So A means not, right? So this course is A soon chronos, not with time, meaning it's not tied or tethered to any time at all. So you do the exercises, you, you know, watch the lectures, take the quizzes and so forth uh, at your own. Uh, pace and your own schedule completely. And I've, in this course, I've taken that basic insight and I've tried to push it as far as I possibly can. So this course has no deadlines save that final deadline at the very end of the semester. So all work, quizzes, and exercise questions, which we'll talk about in a second, and the final paper, all of those are not due until the very end of the semester. So you work at your own pace, on your own schedule. If you have a lot of free time toward the beginning of the semester, but you'll be busy later on, you know, front load the work vice versa, no problem. So the one exception to this is um, about two weeks in, I think, they asked me to give early alert grades just to, you know, if anyone's failing. And for that, I do need some assessment data from you, maybe a module or two. If I have nothing from you by that point, it doesn't affect your long-term grade as long as you get the work in down the road, but I have to enter a zero or an F, so they might send you a panicked email. Again, doesn't mean you're going to actually get an F, but it's a good idea to complete at least some work within the first two weeks. Give yourself a sense of how the class is going to go uh, and give me some assessment data to work with. So that's a good idea. So within the uh, parameters of the class, there's three primary grade components or three grade components. Uh, we have the final paper. Extensive material about the final paper is in the materials for papers module, which you'll find uh, on the Canvas page should be just above this module actually. Um, that paper is not due to the end of the semester, so you have some time. In fact, I would encourage you to take a little bit of time before you look at it, get a feel for kind of what ethics is before you think about writing a paper about it. Um, the next component is uh, quizzes. So every module save one, I believe, has a quiz associated with it. I'm a big believer in quizzes. Uh, I understand that in academia, it is very popular to lump all the assessments into a couple of very large, well, all the assessment data into a couple of very large individual assessments, like a final exam or a midterm or some big tests. Uh, and that's a perfectly legitimate way to do a class. I mean, my dad's a professor, most of my friends are professors. That's fine, they do that. Um, I personally don't like that as much, though, um, because I think that you retain a little bit better when you're incentivized to study the material as it's presented and you're kind of tested in your retention of it shortly after it's presented, right, as opposed to like several months later. Uh, so I don't really like cramming. I like spreading the assessment data out as evenly as possible over the course of the semester. So every module has a quiz. And the quiz is going to be about stuff presented in the lectures. So stuff in this little video lecture is going to be, you know, one or two questions on the quiz are going to be about that. So watch the videos, take good notes. At the end, open the quiz, take the quiz. Or I suppose what you could do is you could open the quiz first, 
uh, and then open the lectures and kind of in another tab, right? And watch those until you get the quiz answer because the quiz isn't timed, right? Uh, and then write the quiz answer and kind of do it that way. I don't know that I would do it that way. I'm not sure it saves time or it's easier, but maybe it is, right? So uh, do it how you want. You only get one shot on the quizzes though because as soon as you hit submit, it's my understanding, the correct answer shows up. So only one shot, be careful, but within that, do it however uh, works best for you. The other part of your assessment is the exercise discussion questions or EDQs. And these are a series of questions, two, three questions, that every module, again, I think except one, has these questions. And they are questions that have no right or wrong answers. They're going to be questions about your life. So this is the opposite of the quiz, where there's an objectively right or wrong answer. These, uh, you're not graded on correctness, but rather on effort. So these are going to be questions about your life. And the point of these is to tie the ethics that we're doing to your lived experience. And I ask these questions for a few reasons. Uh, one is just to warm up your brain. Uh, so before you kind of get into the deeper ethics stuff, it's nice to have like a lighter discussion. You just kind of write read, think, right? Share answers, hear answers. So to warm up your brain is one. Um, one is to get to know each other. I try to approximate for the online class as near as I can the feel of a face-to-face -face class where we're all sharing, we're all discussing, we're all sharing our experiences. Obviously you can't do that in an online setting as completely as you can do in a face-to-face -face setting, but I think you get pretty close. So while I don't uh, require you to respond to your classmates, you don't get extra points for doing that, um, I do encourage you to read their responses because these exercise discussion questions are posted on a discussion board. So check it out, see what they wrote, you know, read my responses. Um, and the third reason is to tie the ethics to your everyday life. It is a deep conviction of mine, and I'm going to talk a lot about this, that ethics is an intensely practical discipline that touches almost literally every area of our life. And so these questions uh, kind of bring that home, showing how the material we're covering in that particular module connects up to your life. I grade these based on effort again, and I give you a sample of what I'm looking for in terms of engagement and word count because I myself answer all these exercise discussion questions first. So you should see my post first there, and there's a there's like two I think where I don't do this because it's like a who's right or wrong type of thing, and I don't want to bias the discussion, but all the other ones I do. So I grade you based on effort. If your effort, word count, engagement with the question is about kind of at where mine's at, that's 100. I have an explanation of the grading breakdown for this in the syllabus if you have any questions about it. Uh, but I encourage you to have some fun with these. Invest, go hard, use it maybe as a little kind of journaling session. So exercise discussion questions, quizzes, and the final paper. No deadlines for the course. The name of the game with this course is communication. So be in touch with me through Canvas message is the best way. I, I'm always down for a Zoom meeting, whatever. Uh, ask me any questions you have. But uh, that's kind of the basic structure of the course. So uh, in the next section, we're going to get into the question of what is ethics and why should we study it? Thanks.